Tumia Bima Pub kwa kupiga nyota 150 nyota 51 alama ya reli au kwa WhatsApp namba 0764166066 na ujipatie bima ya dereva kipato. Bima Pub. Urahisi wa maisha. Pengine uliona kwenye simulizi za filamu au motivational speeches kwenye mitandao ya kijamii au pengine kuna muda unapata hisia za kuwasha gari lako na kushika barabara hiki ndicho walichofanya waholanzi wawili mata pamoja na Renski walioanza safari kwa gari la umeme kutoka nchini kwa Uholanzi hadi Afrika ya Kusini na kurudi kwao safari walioianza toka mwanzoni mwa mwaka 2023 huku wakikadiria itawachukua mwaka mzima kutokea siku wanaanza safari yao. Ikiwa leo ni Jumanne Septemba 12:2023, tayari wameshafanikiwa kutoka Uholanzi hadi South Africa na hapa ni jiji la Dodoma ambapo wamefika jana na leo wanaendelea na safari yao kurejea nchini Uholanzi kwa gari lao hili ambapo wamefika kwenye kituo cha kuchajishia magari ya umeme cha shirika la maendeleo la umoja wa mataifa UNDP kilichopo jijini Dodoma kikiwa ndio kituo cha kwanza kabisa cha kuchajishia magari ya umeme kwa ajili ya kuchaji gari lao ambalo baada ya kulichajisha na kuja wanasema lina uwezo wa kusafiri kwa zaidi ya kilomita 400 wa kirejea nchini kwao ambapo wanakadiria watafika mapema mwezi wa kwanza mwaka na nne hapa tukapata bahati ya kuzungumza nao watueleze kuhusu safari yao na walichokigundua kuhusu magari ya umeme barani Afrika na swali kubwa ikiwa ni kama teknolojia hii inaweza kufanikiwa kwa bara la Afrika e, na huwezi kwa mini wanasema magari ya umeme yanafaa zaidi kutumika Afrika kuliko Ulaya. Karibu kwenye exclusive interview from Zaidi. Hii ni Mwananchi Digital. My name is Maarten from 4x4 Electric from this electric car. My name is Renske. And we are driving from the Netherlands to South Africa and back uh, in uh, yeah, what I said in this electric car. We started our journey uh, the 4th of November in the Netherlands and there we drove in four days all the way to the southern part of Spain. And in Spain we took a ferry uh, to Morocco and from there on we to, uh, we crossed all the coastal countries uh, in West Africa all the way to uh, to Cape Town. Yes, and now we are on our way back up. So yesterday we arrived in Dodoma and um, yeah, we as Martha said the car is fully electric and we charge it as much as possible with solar. So we have solar panels in the back of the car, 60 square meters. And when uh, during the day we lay them out somewhere, we take a rest day and then we charge the car. And in one day we can charge it up to 250 kilometers. And then the next day we drive again. So this way we drove from the south of Morocco all the way to Ghana purely on our solar panels. And from there we started using the grid as well because we entered rainy season. So way more clouds and not as much sun um, and yeah this was sometimes a bit more of a challenge because you have to explain to people what you're doing as often it's the first electric car they see uh, yeah and the reason why we took solar panels with us was because we want to be self-sustaining uh, and uh, yeah therefore uh, we want to be able to charge our car anywhere and not depending on a, on a grid uh, and our goal was to charge at least 51 percent of the energy we used driving to south africa with our own solar panels but we arrived at 40 uh, 54 percent so uh, yeah we, we uh, yeah, the target was uh, we reached our target, and the reason was that we don't want to show a perfect solution. We want to give a solution, and if we would have done everything on our solar panels, then we would be on the road for twice as long at least. Because well, they say in Africa the sun is always shining. We know it's not the case. So uh, I think for four months we didn't see a blue sky in west part of Africa. And it would have been a shame because, for example, in South Africa there's a really good fast charging network. So from Cape Town all the way to the northeast of South Africa you can do purely on fast charging uh, and for example now as well in Dodoma there is a first charging station and then you do want to try that of course as well so for us it's in testing and learning from driving electric and, and also to inspire people so uh, we talk to a lot of people uh, and of course yeah a lot of people come to our car and we always take the time to explain uh, to people that uh, how the car works that we don't use any petrol uh, we open the, the side port to show that there's only electricity connection there uh, and it's completely silent and uh, yeah so therefore uh, yeah people are really surprised uh, but the interesting thing is that 99 percent of the reactions we are getting are are positive or or even better than positive so overall 
all the population of the people we meet, they are really, um, yeah, they are really seeing this as the future. Yes. And for us, the car is not only a vehicle to be transported, but it's also our home. So uh, we sleep in the rooftop tent on, uh, on top of the car. And in the car, we have also a fridge, we have an induction stove, we have a water pump in which uh, for a water tank and we filter our own water to uh, not generate too much plastic waste. So we have a shower, everything we need in the car to, uh, to live. So it's a sustainable uh, way of being self-sufficient. What we, when we enter a country, we always look up like what are the possibilities to charge our car. Uh, for example, we always look up like the, the price for uh, per kilowatt hour. So if we charge at a hotel or like, at people's home, that we always pay a fair price, and we pay always a little bit more because we just want to give uh, we don't yeah give a good example. Um, and what we always check if there are charging stations in the country. And so also well here in Tanzania that we, we searched for other charging stations and well Google uh, gave us a solution. There was one. Uh, the only thing was it was quite difficult to find. Uh, and so but yeah the power of social media uh, in the end uh, we found one and well we're standing here uh, charging it. So uh, yeah it's... Uh, but, but we have also charged here with our solar panels on the campsite and sometimes at a hotel as well. So then we ask at the hotel if they, we can use their grid and then we plug in in a regular wall, uh, wall uh, socket and then we charge the whole night and then we can drive the next morning again. So it's, we have various options to charge and therefore it is a little bit of a puzzle but it's not unsolvable. So you have to be a bit more flexible but it's not challenges we cannot overcome. So uh, yeah, it's going well. So uh, electric driving is uh, quite a new technique um, and what you see is that for example yeah, in, in Europe there are quite, uh, quite some electric cars already, uh, there's a, a well developed electric, electric charging network. But what we have seen here in Africa and in the different countries uh, is that um, the, the, the road network is, is more, uh, makes more sense in some way because in Europe the, the roads are like going everywhere so making a, a charging network is sometimes quite complex because you need a lot of charging stations and what you see in, in a lot of African countries is that the, the roads are just between the big cities and then you can it's quite easy to to make up where you want to put the, the charging networks um, but it's um, what you see in new technologies there there need to be like front runners uh, who uh, dare to to do the investment because yeah of course there's a, a big investment needed for the first part uh, for the charging stations they are now here but of course there was an investment needed to be able to to charge it uh, but now it will be here for years and and can do this trick for for years so yeah and what, what, what we heard as well is that for example in Tanzania they deleted the tax for importing electric cars which results in that they are not as expensive so for now buying an electric car is still a bit more expensive than a fuel car uh, and when, de when deleting the tax that difference is less high so it's less it's, it's more quick interesting um, and in addition once you have bought an electric car it's way more cheap to drive because you have no fuel costs. If you can charge it with solar, then in the end, electricity is for free as, as the investment is done for solar. And the maintenance of the car is a lot less. So we have driven now more than 32,000 kilometers already. In and Africa. We, in Africa. And we have, we have done quite some bad roads, all different uh, circumstances. And all we did was add some wiper cleaning fluid, further nothing. So there's no heat in the car, no oils, no moving parts. It's just very different and therefore the maintenance of it is a lot cheaper. So I think uh, as advice for here as well, it's about informing people in the right way on how the car works, because if people get to know that, then they will learn to trust it and then they will want to try it. Uh, the same as that here are now the first electric cars and I think it's giving people the option to try them and feel how it is and feel the differences and then yeah, you learn that it's, it's actually a quite nice car and it has its advantages. It's different but it has a lot of advantages as well. Yeah, yeah for, for example that in, in quite some countries uh, here in Africa uh, is that driving 100 kilometer costs less than one dollar fifty, one US dollar fifty, and that's in incredibly low uh, for driving 100 kilometers. Uh, so yeah, it, it is way cheaper to. Uh, and total it is cost of course ownership. sustainable as well. And it is sustainable. Yeah. Well. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Uh, what have you guys liked so, so, so far about Africa? 
passion about dancing. So what we, when we left, uh, we already knew that Africa was not a country. Uh, and when we drove to Africa, we now for know for sure that it's not a country. It's very interesting to, to drive through the different countries, crossing a border and be in a completely different uh, world. Uh, for example, the nature can be completely different, just like in that couple of kilometers. Uh, but the people are, are just so, so different and, and uh, not in a negative way, but just different in how they approach us, uh, also in, in the language they speak. Um, so that is really uh, that was for us really interesting to to see how how different people are, but uh, yeah, in a positive way. And uh, here in Tanzania, we yeah, it's it's very relaxed. Um, yeah, it's it's cool to see that also people here are, are interested. And if you drive by, then they yeah, they also always wave to us in a nice car. And uh, yeah, so it's uh, yeah. yeah. So, so, so now you're getting back uh, home. What, what is the what is the future plan? Uh, what are you guys planning? For? Yeah, so our plan is to be back in the Netherlands around the end of the year and uh, first we will arrive there to see our friends and family again as we haven't seen them for more than a year and then next we will mostly focus on sharing our story uh, because we've learned a lot by seeing so many countries uh, testing the car experimenting in different circumstances so we'll give presentations about that to share the story but also educate people on the possibilities and after that, yeah, we, we don't plan that far ahead, uh, but we have quite some ideas on options how to help people implement sustainability in their lives in the Netherlands as well. Thank you very much. And, uh, I want you guys to give me your prediction in a ten to in a, in a five to ten years. What do you see the this technology, especially in Africa? Where do you see it? So with this technology like electric cars uh, in, in like five, five to ten years from now I see that it will be adopted quite fast and the reason for that is um, in Europe we are maybe a little bit ahead on that uh, but what you see in, in Europe is that the, the prices for electric cars are almost now the same as petrol cars in the same uh, class, uh, same uh, class of cars. So now it's not, it's just a matter of making uh, the right decision in, in how much money you want to spend in the total cost of ownership for a car. And I think the advantage is that now with all the low prices in electric cars that uh, um, yeah, countries in Africa that can take the benefit of the, yeah, the, the, all the cars that are now on the market. So that the, that, yeah, the investment is way lower than, uh, than the first electric cars uh, that were in the market in Europe. Yeah, I think the same, that it will come quite quickly, as we have learned already a lot in other countries on how it is to implement, and these learnings can be used in Africa as well to do it here even better, I think. Uh, and one advantage that's now coming on the market as well is that cars can be used to, uh, as a battery for your home as well. So, for example, now the sun is shining, and when you don't use the car, then you can charge the car with solar. And then during the night when the sun is not shining, you can use the battery of the car as a battery for your home so that you don't always rely on the grid. So this is also something that's very interesting, I think, for Africa, because not everybody has a grid at their home and then the car can be the solution for that. So I think in some ways it can give you even more solutions as well. Oh, so so these are the pa panels. Yes. So this, so I, I, what do you do with this? You so we lay have, them these the are six panels in total, and yes. we have sixty, so quite a lot. Yes. And what we do is we take the drawers out and we lay the solar panels in the sun. How long does it take for 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 for, for, for your solar to to charge the car? Uh, we charge a whole day, yes. and then we can drive 250 kilometers. Yeah. That is a lot of kilometers. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yes. Uh, so can I shall I close it yes, all again yes, and then just, just yeah. close it. Yeah. Okay, you can yeah. you can go ahead. Yes, you can go ahead. So here we have the fridge. Oh, okay. So we um. Oh. All right. Let me leave. You can you can you can just leave it. Yeah? You can just leave. Okay. Leave it. Yes. Yeah, so the fridge and we have the shower. Ah, uh, okay, that is the shower. Will I put it here? Yeah. yeah. Okay.
This is the shower? The shower, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah we can use this longer, no. so... Uh, and then cold. we sleep in the tent? Yes. Yeah, where do you call it the water? Um, uh, this could be anywhere. nice, so, so we have um, a so this. Right, so, so, so this is a church, church yes. dock. So this is the fast charging or the... Both. Yeah. So fast charging we use this. Okay. And for normal charging we use the Doppel one. So what do you charge with the, 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 the solar? The solar is the fast charge? Then we use charge. the fast charge, yes. Ah, the solar is the fast charge? Yes. The, 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 one, the, the panels are just yes. to show it's fast charge. Those are fast yes. charge. And this one not? Yeah, this one is not no. fast charge. No, no. Yeah. Okay. Yes? <laughs> okay. Conduction and for the fridge and for all that. Uh, so for that we, we use this one? Yes. This guy is very electric. Yeah, we had malaria. Okay. Yeah. Kabla tulianza safari wengi tukikumbuka kutakisha patairi upepo upo face. Tutakisha spana na jack zipo na zinafanya kazi. Tutakisha beki zinakamata. Kaza mbele, nyuma, indicator hazard zinawaka. Hapo sawa. Waifa zinafanya kazi. Tutaangalia oil, engine na maji. Tunanunua bima na bima pap. Ili zisome na kusomeka. Kisha gari inaoshwa. Yote hayo ni utayari wa chombo chako na changamoto za safari. Ila so kwa ajili yako wewe dereva, ye yeah, dereva, umechukua hatua gani? Kulinda uhakika wa kuendelea kujipatia hela. Si unajua? Ya babalani hatabiriki. Tumia Bima Pub kwa kupiga nyota 150 nyota 51 alama ya reli au kwa WhatsApp namba 0764166066 na ujipatie bima ya dereva kipato. Umahili wa dereva hauishi tu kwenye kumudu uskani bali pia umakini wa kulinda kipato chake wakati wa majanga ya kifedha Bima Pub Urahisi wa maisha